Hi there, welcome to a quick video tutorial on the distributed property and solving equations. In this video, we're going to just review some equation solving strategies that you may have seen in previous mathematics studies, and hopefully you can take these and apply them to your current course of study. Okay, so the first thing uh, we'll look at is just a little bit of review of the distributed property. Remember, this is a method that we can use to eliminate parentheses in, a, in an algebraic expression. You, know, you might recall, in order to do this, what we do is we take the term on the outside of the brackets and we distribute it into the brackets. And we do that by means of multiplication, which makes sense because this expression here says x times the expression inside the brackets. So we're going to distribute that x into the brackets by means of multiplication. Now there's a little rainbow here because you know if, if you actually draw these lines out to remind yourself that you're distributing this term to each term inside the brackets, they kind of look like rainbows. I still do this. It's a good habit to get into just to just to visualize what's happening. We're going to do x times x squared. So if you think back to your exponent laws, recall that this x has a 1 here in the exponent. And when I multiply two powers with the same base, I add my exponents. So my first term in my expanded expression should be x cubed, right? So I'm adding one and two. Next, I'm gonna distribute x and, and multiply by negative two x. Same thing, I'm gonna add my exponents. I've got an exponent of one on this x term as well. So I'm going to add those two together. I keep my coefficient the same uh, because I'm multiplying negative two times one, there's an imaginary one in front of this x term. So I should end up with negative two x squared. I'm adding my exponents. Lastly, I'm gonna do x times three, and I should end up with three x. Just a quick little example of the distributed property. The last thing you wanna do always is, is just check and see if you've got any like terms that you can collect. In this case, I do not have any like terms. Remember, like terms have the same variable and the same exponent. So in this case, we simplified our expression and we're good to go. Uh, this next guy, another distributed property situation where we want to eliminate these parentheses. We're going to take the term on the outside and we're going to draw our rainbows and distribute into the inside by means of multiplication. Just be careful here, there, this, this minus sign, it's tricky because there's actually a one there. So we're, we're actually going to be taking negative one and distributing it into the brackets again by multiplying. Don't get tripped up by that. This is just another multiplication situation. So I've got 3a times a, same situation where I add my exponents, I should end up with 3a squared. I'm multiplying 3 times negative 5 with an a, so I should have negative 15a. I'm going to distribute my negative 1 into the brackets by multiplying, so I end up with negative 2a squared, and I've got a negative 1 times negative 2, that's my simplified expression. However, it is not actually simplified because I've got some like terms that I can collect. Okay, take a peek. I've got 3a squared. I've got negative 2a. I'm going to call those like terms because they have the same variable and the same exponent. So I'm just going to quickly write my simplified line here. If I take 3a squared and I take away 2a squared, so I've got 1a squared left. I'm just going to write it in this way. Hopefully you can follow that. This would be my simplified expression. I've collected my like terms. I've got no more like terms to collect. I should be okay the most simplified form of that expression. So that's a distributed property. One thing that you've probably seen at some point, multiplying binomials, this FOIL acronym is very useful uh, for expanding two binomials. So what I've got is a, a binomial, an expression with two terms. So I've got one, two, and I'm multiplying by another binomial with two terms. We can use this FOIL acronym to explain how we expand and simplify our expression. So the F in FOIL stands for first, so what I do is I take the first term of each binomial and I multiply those two together. The next part says take the outside terms, outside being the terms on the outside of the expression. So this x again and this b would be considered outside terms. So I'm going to draw my rainbows and I'm going to multiply. The inside terms, that would be this term here on the inside of the expression. Uh, as well as this x, also on the inside of the expression. So I'm going to multiply those two together. And lastly, I'm going to take the last terms, which would be this a term here, the last term of this binomial, and the last term of this binomial. And I'm going to multiply those two together. So let's do this in practice. A couple examples. Multiply the following binomials. When I'm multiplying binomials, you should instantly think of FOIL. Okay, so we're going to take our first terms the x and the x are the first terms of binomial. 
of each binomial. I'm going to multiply those two, get two together. I've got x times x. I should end up with x squared. That's how I get this first x squared. Next in, in our FOIL acronym is the O, which stands for outside. I'm going to take my outside terms and multiply them together. So I've got 5 times x to get 5x. I'm going to take my inside terms next. So I take this negative 3 and I multiply by positive x. I end up with negative 3x. And lastly, I take my last terms and multiply them together to get negative 15. So that's the first step in FOIL. Next step is always, of course, to collect our like terms. Taking a look at this expression, I've got 5x and negative 3x. Those are like terms. They've got the same variable, same exponent. This x squared is not considered a like term with this pair because it's got a different exponent. So when I collect my like terms, I've got 5x's. I'm subtracting 3x's. I end up with 2x's. And that is my simplified expression. All right, so taking a peek at example B here, well, same situation, but I've got a coefficient of 2 in front. What I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to FOIL this thing in a similar way, but I'm just going to carry this 2 along for the ride as I go throughout. I'm going to take my 3x, multiply by x to get 3x squared. I'm going to follow my FOIL process, and I get the expression that I'm keeping in parentheses here. The reason I keep those terms inside my brackets is because I now have a distributive property situation where I'm going to distribute my 2 into the brackets in this way. Now I'm going to multiply each of these terms by 2. I actually I collected my like terms first. I apologize for that. 3x, negative x are like terms. I've collected them to get 2x. Next I'm going to distribute my 2 into the brackets. It doesn't matter what's, what order you do those steps in. I could distribute that 2 first and then collect my like terms. Uh, you should get the same result. So that's multiplying binomials using the FOIL acronym. Next thing I want to do in this video lesson is just go over some strategies for solving equations. Two steps here. The first thing, usually if you've got some brackets, use the distributive property to remove brackets. We just looked at distributive property. We're going to use algebra to collect all terms with a variable on one side of the equation and all the other terms on the other side of the equation. That should help us solve for our variable. So this example says solve the following equations for the unknown variable. The unknown variable in this case is x. We're trying to solve for x. So what we need to do is follow our first step, which says to use the distributive property to remove brackets. So we're going to take this negative 3 and we're going to distribute it into the brackets in a similar way we did with our previous examples. So the left-hand side stays the same. We're multiplying x by negative 3, so we get negative 3x. We take negative 3 times 3 to get negative 9. The next thing we need to do is use algebra to collect all terms of the variable on one side of the equation. You might recall from previous studies that we can move terms to other sides of the equation by performing the opposite operation on both sides. So I'm going to take this positive 3 and I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides of the equation. Okay, and when I do that, I haven't changed my equation at all. If you picture kind of like a, like a scale, if I do something to one side and something to the other side, the scale should balance out. Uh, and I've got positive 3 and negative 3. Those guys are going to cancel. But you can see I've effectively moved my 3 over to the other side by making it negative 3. Okay, and I should be able to do the same thing with this negative 3x. I can just add 3x on both sides. So if I do that on this side and I do that on this side, you can see that I've moved my x term over to the other side of the equation. These guys are going to cancel out nicely. All my x terms are on one side. All my non-x terms are on the other side. I can now collect my like terms. All right, I've got 2x and 3x. These are like terms. On the other side of the equation, I've got 2, negative 9, negative 3, or 2 minus 9, minus 3. Those are all like terms. And I end up with an expression like this. This is a one-step, easy-to-solve equation. I just need to get x by itself. Remember, to get x by itself in this situation, I'm multiplying, so I'm going to divide by 5. That effectively undoes my multiplication operation. i got to make sure I do that on the other side as well, or else I'll tip the scales. I'm going to change the equation if I divide by 5 on both sides. That leaves me with a lonely x. That was our goal. Isolate x. Negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2. Okay, so we've solved for x, and we've, we've solved our equation. Now, if you wanted to check your answer, you could take this x value that you've found and substitute it back into your original equation, everywhere you see an x. Check to see if your left side equals your right side. 
if your left side does equal your right side, you've, you've solved for the correct x value. If you've made a mistake, you would see that your left and your right side would not equal each other. I would just suggest going back and checking your work, making sure you haven't broken any algebra rules in order to arrive at the correct x value. Okay, I just want to do one more quick example here. This one's a little bit more involved, just simply due to the fact that I'm dividing both sides of the equation by a different number. I've got a different number on the denominator, but I'm going to use the same strategies to solve this equation. Uh, and I'm going, to, I'm going to solve it for y in this case. The first thing I want to do, of course, is just use my distributive property. I want to get rid of the brackets on the top of this equation in the numerator. I can do that using the distributive property. I can multiply 4 times 7. And, uh, 4 times 7y and 4 times 1, uh, you see something like this. Okay, the next thing that's kind of concerning is these, these fractions. I want to get rid of those. I want to get rid of the numbers in the denominator. And if I think about 2 and 5 and I write out multiples of 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and I do the same thing for 5, 5, 10, the first number that comes into mind that both of these have in common is 10. So if I multiply both sides of the equation by 10, this should help me cancel out my, my fractions. I have 10 over 1. You'll remember when we multiply fractions, we have to multiply straight across. So what I have here is I've got 10 times this mess. I could effectively think of this as 10 divided by 2. Okay, so if I take 10 and I divide by 2, I'm left with 5. Uh, the 1 would, would still remain underneath. I'm not going to write that just for simplicity purposes. What I've done is I've effectively canceled out my denominator, which is what my goal was. I'm going to do the same thing on, on this side of the equation. So I've got 10. I'm going to divide by 5, and you can see that I end up with 2. So my denominators are now gone. Perfect. I'm in a situation where I can use my distributive property. And next, I'm going to do the same process that I that I performed in the previous example, which is using algebra to rearrange my equation so that all of my, my y terms are on one side of the equation and my, my non-variable terms are on the other side of the equation. You remember I do that using some fancy algebra work. So you can see here I've subtracted 56y over to the other side. I've added 10 over to the other side. All that's left to do at this point is just collect my like terms. Okay, you can see those two are like terms. These two are like terms. I end up with negative 6y equals 18. I can use some, some simple algebra just to divide both sides by negative 6. Negative 6's are going to cancel. You're, you've isolated y. You've solved for y. y equals negative 3. Okay, and just like in the previous example, you could take your, your solution. You can substitute it back in for y. You can do a little bit of uh, algebra work, and you'll see that uh, the left side equals the right side. Okay, so that's the end of this video tutorial. Just looked at some solving equation strategies. We also looked at the distributed property. I'm hoping this helps as you move on into further studies in whatever course it happens to be that you're studying. All right, thanks for watching.